What's good, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything, good and bad, you name it, inside the world of Apple. There's lots of iPhone news and rumors this week, with September 10th getting closer, so I just wanted to prepare you for it. And we start with a report from the Wall Street Journal that says Apple has asked their assembler, Hanhai Precision Industry Company, to begin shipping the new high-end and low-end phones in early September. We even predicted on this show last year that Apple should bring two phones to the market. Yeah, I know we predicted two different screen sizes, which we're probably not getting, but it looks pretty certain that we'll see Apple announcing two different iPhone models at the same time for the first time, and everyone remembers their first time <gasps> riding a bike. Now, we told you last week about the rumors of a gold phone. You know, that one. Well, now All Things D is confirming that Apple will indeed release a gold iPhone that's more of an elegant gold tone like champagne. Now, their sources say it will be a white front face with a gold tone back plate and chamfered edge like this mock-up from iMore. And it made me wonder, what other great things have we seen that are gold? Well, the Olympics have the gold medal. Mario jumps around to collect gold coins. And in Japan, they have the golden turd. And there's even pills with 24 karat gold flakes in them, so you can actually poop gold. Clearly, the gold iPhone has some really prestigious company. Now, the iPhone 5C is still getting hated on by the hardcore Apple fans, but the reality is that it's not a phone targeting them. KGI analyst Ming-Chi Kuo is predicting that the 5C will actually replace the iPhone 5 in the lineup, and it will support TDD LTE used by China Mobile to give Apple a huge boost overseas. But the expected iPhone 5S will still be the more popular model globally and exceed the 5C in shipments. All right, this week's leaked Apple part from NowhereElse.fr is the rear shell of the next-gen iPad and iPad Mini. Ooh, ah. It jives with everything we've heard and seen about the design over the past few months, so we thought we'd just show it to you anyways. And looking into the future with Apple patents, the Big A has been granted a patent called Working with 3D Objects for 3D Gesture Control on Touchscreen Devices. Now, this would allow the user to extend the multi-touch capabilities used on the screen to the airspace above the screen, allowing for 3D manipulation of objects with 3D gesture inputs. So, you could spin a dice around that would be displayed on the screen while your fingers are manipulating it above it, and it's something I've always wanted to do in life. Now, if you guys missed this one, Apple's also researching flexible headphone connectors to prevent them from potentially breaking. By using flexible or elastic parts on the connector, the plug would be able to withstand moderate bending that might break other connectors. And no one wants a connector stuck inside a port. All right, to the quick bites. Key Nike Fuel Band developer and fitness expert Jay Blanick confirmed he has joined Apple's team and is likely working on something that goes maybe on your wrist or even the next eye headband. I want that. Now, all signs point to something iWatch related, obviously, but the Fuel Band is honestly the weakest fitness band of the bunch, and it just has Nike's marketing muscle. So we better see more than just a made-up calculation we can't track called Fuel on the next iWatch. And I'm sorry, but I'm just keeping it real. All right, Google has updated some of its apps with some really cool bells and whistles. The YouTube app on iOS has just been updated, and you can now multitask in the app by dragging your video from the top to the bottom to have your video playing in the bottom corner while still searching for more videos and swiping to get rid of it. It's a sweet update we're checking out, so you guys should look at that. And if you're using Google Maps like I am, they've started integrating traffic data from their acquisition with Waze so you can see if there are any accidents, road construction, or hazards in your area by going to the traffic tab, and I'm loving this update. And the Jobs movie, you know, the one with Ashton Kutcher, has been out in theaters, and it made an estimated $6.7 million over the weekend, according to Box Office Mojo. The Steve Jobs biopic earned less than one-third as much as the Facebook movie, and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak called Kutcher disingenuous and believes the movie is wildly inaccurate. It also has a 26% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and yikes, that's a bad apple. Now, this isn't looking good. Maybe some of you enjoyed it, but I'm not planning on seeing it, and I'll wait for Aaron Sorkin's interpretation instead because uh, he's pretty good. All right, our show is out early this week because I'm in the NYC, so we're going to extend the Monster DNA headphone giveaway valued at over $200 for one more week. That means you have more time to send me your video submissions of you dancing like a crazy 
It can be a YouTube, Vine, or Instagram, and send your link to the applebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. And this has to be a video you just shot because people sending me links from like two years ago, it ain't gonna cut it in. You really need to bring your A game. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next week for another bite of the apple.